Amit Uncle, I've, um, I've never ever looked into your eyes because I've always been so intimate at home and because of such an unforgettable moment for me, I'm going to try and look into your eye and speak. It still uh, scares the shit out of me, but uh, <laughs> I will try. Uh, just to start with, Amit Uncle, apart from the uh, 10,000 memories I have of you as, as somebody who's you know, been around you while growing up, but also as a fan uh, of, of the work you do, I think the three biggest uh, moments for me have been in which the moments that had you. The first one was when I had come for the shooting of Ajuba. Uh, I was really young and uh, I wasn't really aware of actors and what they do and I wasn't even aware that my father was an actor. But uh, just that image of this tall man in that kurta pajama and uh, the sash that you were tying around your waist, when you came, it scared me so much that I had nightmares for the next one month. Goodness. Uh, because I don't think, uh, uh, I had seen a human being who had that presence, that, that uh, uh, you know, that mag magnetism uh, that you had. That was the first. What have you been drinking before this? I had two glasses of champagne. <laughs> yeah, this is ridiculous. I mean, why would you imagine something like this? <laughs> uh, second moment uh, was that when I was in school, I was uh, uh, in New York. And I think for the last 20 years, there has not been one year that you've forgotten to wish me on my birthday. And I remember my first semester, I was in class and, uh, and you had called and you had left a, a message on the answering machine. And when I came home, <coughs> the words that I heard is, uh, Hi Ranbir, this is Amitabh Bachchan calling uh, to wish you a very happy birthday. I remember that entire semester of four months, that was my trump card. I showed off to every <laughs> friend of mine that Amitabh Bachchan called and wished me on my birthday. And I got a lot of uh, attention from the ladies when I was in school. And third was after school when um, I had the, the good uh, privilege to assist Mr. Bansali on black. And I think more than all the years that I spent in film school and acting school, I actually got to see an artist like you live in front of me. Uh, apart from the subtleties and the wonderful things you do in acting, just to see your childlike enthusiasm, your passion, when you did a good shot, how Abhishek used to come and used to show him, you know, see this, what do you think? Uh, you know, always requesting for another take. Uh, it really instilled some, uh, some amazing education in me about film, so I really want to thank you for that. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Swamina, we are here to talk about uh, <clears throat> acting, and uh, I I'm really sorry that I have to share this stage with you because no one should share this stage no, no, with no, you no, no. <laughs> where acting is concerned. But I have uh, I've been uh, thinking about, like, what should I ask you? Uh, you know, should it be a generic conversation, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a public friendly conversation. But then I thought that I'll never get a moment like this, so I'm just going to ask you a few things that I wanted to know about sure. you. Uh, so we'll just... So what is your take on commercial cinema? Uh, you know, you've been part of such great commercial hits mm -hmm. all your life. And today you see that tilt shifting, you know, towards different kinds of films which are also making money. But I, I as an actor who's been working since the last seven years, I, I find it very hard when people say, hey, Ranbir, masala film karo, commercial film karo. You know, don't do films like uh, you know, the films like I do, you know, they don't really reach a wider audience. So what is your take on this commercial cinema? No, I don't think there's any, uh, there's any necessity to have a debate on this. Films are made for the box office. Every film, whether it's a so-called art film or so-called different kind of cinema, they're all made for the box office. Uh, everybody invests a lot of money in it and you want to look for a return. I don't really know what is a masala film and what is the other kind of film. I think audiences decide that. They they like a particular film, they want to go and see it again and again. I think in the early stages when, when cinema first came to India, it came as a tool to, you know, entertain people who were going to watch any form of entertainment after a hard day's work. And cinema was the only kind of entertainment that was available at that time. Now, when you slogged an entire day in the heat and the dust and whatever it is, you want to just come and sit and see something interesting, see a nice story which maybe has a moral at the end. All our stories have morals in the end. Uh, and uh, you can get some music, get some pretty faces, some nice locations. And that was the intent really. But I think when you talk about the other kind of cinema, it's credit should really go to the audiences of the country because they have changed, their tastes have changed. Uh, they want to see better films. Better in the sense that they want to see um, something more credible rather than something more escapist. And I think a lot of that has to do with the advent of television, of internet, uh, mobile phones, whatever you may call it. Everyone has access, as you know, to some of the latest stuff that is going on 
in any other part of the world. And when they can see it almost free of cost at home, why would they want to spend a lot of money to go into a theater and see it? Right. So um, that has been quite challenging for some of the newcomers and, uh, and the new makers. And if you're saying that the kind of cinema that you do is, uh, does not make a lot of money, you're wrong because I think that some of your films have done huge business. And it's nothing got to do with you know, what kind of taste you have. It's just that you want to be seen as somebody doing something credible, somebody that is seen to be doing something which everybody identifies with. People have a, a, a wonderful knack of knowing when an actor is doing well or when he's not doing well. Right. The fact that, you know, you're so popular and so good is, you know, due to the fact that your audience is like you. Irrespective of what kind of films you do. I mean, um, all your films, I, I find, uh, have been... I'm saying as a learning graph because um, I find it very unusual uh, the way you react to any situation, the way you look, like right now, the way you're looking at me. It's, you know, seriously, yeah, it's, um, it's a great learning. It's, it's very difficult to do that. To not move any muscle on your face or on your body and just keep looking and be able to convey uh, so many feelings is a tough job. You can see me using my hands in my face and I'm frowning and while I'm trying to talk to you, but I didn't see you moving uh, your face as much as I did when you were talking about me. Um, it's, it's a quality that you have. A lot of it has got to do with your own face and that's God gifted. But I always notice that uh, when you perform, you don't do much. But it's, it gets conveyed. So how are you able to do that? So that's my question to you. Well, because you. I feel that, um, I feel you have, you have great movement um, within your eyes when you're, or just something that you do with your body. Or, I, I can't put my finger in, but when I see it, I say, yeah, this is correct and this is good. So um, when you say that, you know, the kind of films that you worked in don't do well, I don't think it's, it's, it's worrisome. I don't think you should worry about that because audiences are very mature. You are brilliant. And, um, and I can say that uh, because I, I see so many of your products and I just, you know, wonder if I can sometimes emulate what you do. It's, no, it's, seriously, it's, um, it's just to remain still in a frame and not say anything, not do anything, but still. And it's not just in your films. I watch the ads that you do and they are remarkable. I'm not going to pull my leg. No, right. seriously, I'm telling you, 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 I'll tell you an ad that you did where you played an old man. Right. You didn't say anything. There was just a who and a ha and, and a look and that's it. But it conveyed the product, the client, everyone was happy with it. That's, that's remarkable. I, I, I envy that Thank because I, I will not be able to do that. Thank you. So, Anakar, I really want to know what you do at home. Uh, like if you're not working, yeah. are you constantly in a state of inspiration? Like you have this other film that you're working on. You're always like, you know, whenever somebody speaks to you, you're so aware of everything that happens in the world about politics, about sports. Are you just constantly learning, you know, reading stuff? Or you, do you have moments where you just don't do anything and just relax? No, no, it's... Uh, I, this mobile phone is, is, is a horror. You know, it's... The moment you put it on, you want to go to Twitter, you want to go to Facebook, you want to get all kinds of news and it's just become a habit. And once you start, you know, scrolling, Constantly. you just don't want to stop. And I, I feel that all our brains are exhausted with the kind of information that we keep getting. No oh, Lord. And it's just endless and um, we are continuously multitasking. So if you're waiting for your window in your laptop to open or a particular site to open. You want to make a phone call, you want to attend to your mobile, you search something else. It's, it's, it's the continuous process. Right. 
I don't know whether it's healthy or not, but you never get a moment to stop. So, Mithangal, I've really tried to stay away from social media because I, uh, I had a different take to it. I yeah. always thought that, uh, especially for actors, uh, we are all so easily accessible, uh, you know, now because of our movies, because of the internet, because of, you know, media news channels, promotions, airports. ad films, airports. Yeah. Uh, there is an Going overload. in, coming out, yeah. you know, what you were wearing. This has become a problem. Exactly. I've got to think before I go to the airport, what did I wear? Yeah, I better wear something repeat. different, otherwise Can't repeat. I'm going to get photographed, yeah. So, do you think I'm losing out? Uh, you know, that I'm no, 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 no. Social media. You, you must do what you feel like doing. Right. That's also very important. I, I, I think I spoke to you once before yes. about this. Yeah, I was... Somebody, somebody actually came and said you should have a website because uh, there are about a hundred websites in your name and they're Feel not ideas. carrying all the right information. So they said it'll take about six months, it'll take you to design something. And um, I said, can I do something tomorrow? And they said, you can write a blog. I said, what is that? They showed me how it was done. I wrote, hello everyone, I'm on this blog and thank you so much. Two lines. Next day I got a response. I said, my goodness, this is fantastic. So I sent a reply in my next one to this person. Next day I got four. And this just continued. And I have now written the blog every day. It's 3,103 days wow. nonstop today. Wow. Every day, and you do it yourself? Every day, I do it myself. There is nobody else who does no, it no, for no. you. you Everyone thinks I have a time. huge team that works with me, no. Then I went on Twitter. I'm on 2,403 days on Twitter and 1,503 days on Facebook. Wow. wow. And I do it every day. So apart from social media, what else do you do? Are you comfortable with being alone? Yeah. You like loneliness? I don't say I like it. If I have company, I'll enjoy that. Mm -hmm. But if I don't, then I'm okay by myself. And traveling, like on your time when you're not working, do you like traveling? I would want to, but I think um, now I'm more comfortable at home. But I mean, I can be an artist. How can you uh, be the? Uh, how can you be inspired, or create, or be somebody new, if the spaces around you and your surrounding has is not changing? Don't you want to go and rejuvenate yourself, take something from? Places and what is to guarantee that, you know, wherever I travel, it will help me rejuvenate? <coughs> just interaction. I can just be sitting in one place. But I could be rejuvenating right here, right now. But don't you want to like, interact with new people? Because you don't really get out much of your house, right? That's okay. Um, I meet them on television, on, on media, on social media. I read opinions and, you know, read their reactions to whatever topic is prominent. And I think that somehow you come to know their value, their worth, or whatever it is. So that's enough, I think. But I remember once mm -hmm. when you had taken a break from acting, <clears throat> long yeah. back, you did take off. Bad mistake. For a long time, right? Yeah. So what was that like? It was a mistake. Why do you say that? Because um, I don't think that I should have been away from the camera in the studio. I think every day, <clears throat> is a great learning for all of us. And to sit back and say, you know, I'm not going to work, this is um, a sabbatical, is wrong because a lot of water keeps flowing through. And the time that I, I took the break, um, I felt that even after three years, I'll go back and I'll still be able to work and continue my job. But no, um, <clears throat> in this profession, you know better than I do that um, there's always somebody waiting around the corner who's better than you, better looking than you, more popular, and he will take your place. I'm sorry, I, I again want to uh, <coughs> go back to this, this, this sabbatical that you had taken. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you take it as failure, that sabbatical? Because right now when you, you s um, spoke about it... Not a failure. Uh, I just thought that it was not right. I okay. shouldn't have uh, been away from in front of the camera. I think working every day is, um, is a huge impetus, not just to me as a professional, but also to the craft. Because every day I'm sure you know that uh, we're always learning something. We meet some new people, work with new artists, uh, work in a, uh, a new surrounding, meet directors and people who you have not worked with or are young and coming up, have fresh ideas. It's, it's a huge learning. And I think that I missed out on that. Completely. So it was the fear of missing out for more. Yeah, emotion. absolutely. 
So did you ever deal with failure? I don't think you ever hit failure in your life. Yeah, every day, huge failures. But which phase was your was your hard phase? You yeah, had so many phases. Every day is is, is tough, you know, Ranbir. But um, I I wouldn't like to you know categorize it. Um, but the point is that at some point in time you you have to sit back and say, okay, I failed here, I failed here, I failed here. So what am I? Um, what do I do? What do I, or what can I do best? And can I go back to that? So you think and you say, okay, this is what I can do. I must get back to it. And you just start working on it. You have to work small, and you have to adjust. And uh, once that is, once you reconcile yourself with that fact. Then I think it's um, it's just taking you know steps forward. I, I, I it's it's pretty well known that uh, I had a huge failure uh, in the corporation that I began. It went bankrupt. It it bankrupted me. Um, I had no films. I had no money. A um, lot of legal cases. A lot of uh, uh, creditors who were. Uh, hounding me to pay their money. Uh, it's, a, it's a horrid feeling because the very people that, um, that applaud you and, you know, um, sing praises about you uh, at a time when you are doing well, those very same people abuse you and, uh, and uh, you know, be become very demanding. Um, it's, it's, it's tough to face that. So you sit back and you think, uh, you know, what can I do? And, and, and I said, look, I'm an actor and I should try and go back to acting. So that's what I did. So uh, started off small, went across to ESG. And mm -hmm. said, you know, I'm, I'm without a job. Um, I need a job. Um, and if you've got something... And I you don't have an ego to say this to directors? At yeah, you know, um, you I've never been able to understand what ego means, so it's okay with me. If I, if I don't have a job, I'll go and tell somebody. And if I need a job, I'll go and ask for it. So I just went and asked and I got Mohabbate and then we started working. Uh, I don't find anything wrong with that. I Not don't many find people it do. embarrassing. Not many people do that, especially someone in your position. No, there is no position. I think you have to realize first whether you have a position. Who decides what your position is? I think you yourself know where you stand. When you do a movie, you know whether you've done well or not done well. That's and, true. Um, and I think that's, I think we are capable enough to understand uh, how we have performed and what was lacking. Uh, when I was on Black, I yeah. mean, there were times when we all were so struck by what you did. But after three days, you're still seeing that shot and you're telling Mr. Bansali ki, I, that one beat was wrong. And, you know, my, my, I clenched my jaw a little too early or too late. And, you know, I mean, that precision. I've acted with a lot of actors and I've also seen uh, yeah. a lot of actors work. I don't think anybody has that precision and that desire to get every beat right. Uh, that's really something yeah, to... It, 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 I think it worries you when, you when you see the film and because you're looking for all these little things. Um, observation is what we live on, really, you know, and somewhere within us there is some kind of a computer that keeps working um, and observes things and at some freak point in some film five years down the line, that effect comes out. So, uh, like, when I see black now, I, I hate to see that dining room scene where I'm going to read the letter. The letter. But I mean, at that moment, I remember, because I was working with Mr. Bansali on Savaria. Yeah. Uh, that was his next film. So when you read that letter and you get choked, there is a certain uh, movement in your jaw. Mr. Bansali pointed that out so many times to me because he's saying like, oh gosh. apart from being the gifted actor that you are, you're also such a physical actor, you know, who knows to use his muscles and has control over his facial muscles. Uh, so I remember that shot so clearly because he ingrained it. Oh gosh, you know, this as an is, actor, you should this is the first time like I'm hearing it, you know. Do you remember that shot? Um, I remember the shot for another reason. Okay. I remember that shot because of the mistake that I made. What mistake? Uh, the mistake was that I pull out the letter and I go for my specs and start reading. That was wrong. How do I know that my specs say here if I'm suffering from Alzheimer's? And I, and no, I but you've been too harsh on yourself. No, yeah. no, no. I, I really should have brought out that letter and, and 
thought about it and then brought it out. It's a, just a little moment, but the moment I took the letter, I just went straight to my specs and took it out. That was wrong, and I cursed myself. And I kept telling Sanjay. And the fact that you have this quality, you are blessed. Since we're on black and a lot of people listening here, <clears throat> he was um, assisting um, uh, Sanjay Leela Bansali on black. But his main job was to train that little girl who played the, the blind artist. And if, I will say this, if you have appreciated that little girl, it's all his doing because he used to sit with her and, and tell her, you behave like this, you put your eyes like this and you talk like this. And, and then she used to do and then he used to take her away and he used to train her and then she used to come and give the shot. So if you have appreciated her, it's all his doing. Thank you. Uh, also another trivia about Black, I don't think many people know this, that uh, the only person I have body doubled for is you. The shot, uh, which is in the, uh, the, the, the beginning titles, uh, there is a shot of uh, Devraj, your character, sitting on the fountain. And because ah, your yes. date was not available, that was you? that's me. Oh, wow. So I had to like pad myself up with some five overcoats <laughs> and with the, uh, the skull cap. And I had to sit like this and <laughs> Rani is running towards me and that's she right. dives. So I have the, the, uh, the good privilege to be Amitabh Bachchan for it. <laughs> it, was, it was really awesome. What's that one mm. film, Amitabh Uncle, mm -hmm. in your career that if you had to choose, if I had a gun, pointed at you and I said, you have to choose that one film, yeah. which is your favorite film. It's a film which is for all ages. Yeah. If you had to choose that one film and that one character, what would that be? And I, you have to please name this because I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I, I, I would tell you to use that gun and shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> so that just because says I really so don't many. have a, It's very tough. I can't choose. Um, I can't choose because, um, not because, you know, I, I feel that I'm belittling the people who, who made those 200 films with me. Uh, and they all went through a huge process uh, of mind thinking, uh, mechanics, technology, writing, living that part in creating something like that. Um, it would be belittling them. But it's a gun. Yeah, I know it's a gun, but so I, so I don't mind dying for that. <laughs> Shoot me. <laughs> okay, according to me, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people talk about Agnipat, uh, you know, Tushul, Divar, Kabi Kabi, uh, Black, Piku. Uh, but to me, my favorite two films of yours, or your, my favorite two characters, has been uh, Anthony of Amarakbar Anthony mm -hmm. and uh, Namakalal. And I think Shweta's favorite also, and we always discuss this. Oh, really? Uh, so I think comedy is a genre which you were just amazing in. And I don't really see you do a lot of comedy, and Piku was really a refreshing change because you did something light after a long time. So what made you choose Piku then? Was it Sujit? I didn't. Story? Yeah, Sujit uh, was the one that. Uh, shows me for that. Sujit and me worked in another film uh, right. called Shubait, Shubait, which unfortunately has uh, not been released. That was a, a, a somewhat serious character. Um, and when he came with Piku, he, he, I don't know why he thought I would be able to do it. But he just that is an odd character to pick, right? Yeah, it's a very odd character, yes. Yeah. But he came to me and said, this is the character and this is what's going to happen. And uh, you're going to be constipated throughout the film, which I said is fine, and uh, we went ahead. But it was, it was nice to be doing something different with Shujit because we'd done something serious earlier on. Yeah. And then to play again in pink, uh, something a lot more um, value in the sense of you know the moral and the social say, yeah. angle. Uh, so it was, it was different in that way. Yeah. So do you still? Uh do you still enjoy, you know, because uh, now after when a film is released and you get so many messages and, you know, now because of social media, people are also interacting with you. Do you enjoy the praise or you feel like I've heard it now? On no, to no, the no. Next? I, I store every one of them. Because uh, soon enough when, you know, when you're unable to walk and you're in this, you know, this typical rocking chair that they call, I wish to go there and read them. Yours will be there. Yeah, but you'll need another lifetime to like read everything. Right? No. <laughs> How will you finish it? No, no. It's, it's not that. It, it's good to keep visiting it. I think, uh, you know, technology today has made it very accessible. It's all on just one little computer and you just press a few buttons and everything comes down. You can pick and choose, you know, what you want to listen to or what you want to hear and read. But I think it's... Uh, in, sometimes it's quite invigorating to be able to read a praise that may have come at the time when you did a performance, but go back several years and then read it. It's like opening 
an old file where some of your childhood photographs, letters that you wrote to your parents, or your parents wrote to you, it's lovely to just go through them. So those are the kind of things that I guess. But I want to ask you, Ranbir, that you went to acting school in New York, and I want to know the process of how acting is taught, because I never went there, and I always feel that I have missed out on it. I, I never knew that there were acting schools. I only came to know about it when I started seeing Jaya, because she came from the institute. Um, what does it do, and, and what does it do to train you as an actor, or what is the process that you go through? So to be honest, it's absolutely rubbish, you know, because, <laughs> okay. uh, like you said, you know, acting is not something that can be taught. And uh, the Strasbourg Theatre Institute, it's yeah. a, it's, it teaches you the method. And you can't really go there and learn the method in nine months. Yes, subconsciously, uh, you know, you learn something Was that about, how long you were? Nine months? Nine months. Okay. So you learn something about sense memory, you learn something about how you... Sense you, memory? Sense memory. What is that? And emotional memory, you know, if you're doing a crying scene, there is like... Uh, if you remember a smell and that would take you back to that emotional memory and you can use that for a scene that you're doing which is supposed to be a dramatic emotional scene. Um, so things which actually an intelligent person already knows. You know, if you're acting and if you don't really want to fake it completely, if you're supposed to be sad, you hear some sad music or a music that kind of, you know, goes back to, connects you to some moment where you were sad. Mm -hmm. um, but, and I, I'm not saying this because I'm sitting in front of you, my actual acting school was on sets of black when I saw you performing and how Bansali was, you know, directing you and how you were responding to it, that's where I really, you know, learned everything. And that's where I really, I just took everything selfishly, you know, how much ever I could. Uh, but I wouldn't advise anybody to go to an acting school. I would advise them to go to an Amitabh Bachchan set. <laughs> I think that's... Uh, but you haven't done theatre. Uh, you know, amateur theatre, everybody's done that. That kind of stuff. But so, like, acting on stage, would you call that something you would enjoy? I would, but not now. I won't be able to do it now. Why not? Because I'm scared. It's, it's, it's tough to be on theatre. It's very tough. Um, I'll, I won't remember my lines. That's to start off with. But... Um, um, you have an elephant's memory and... No, no, no. It's, 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 it's really tough to be able to do theatre. I, I admire all the people that do it. I've you seen know. you learn a four-page monologue in like one hour. And it was word to word. That's another question I always wanted to ask you is, do you always uh, stick to the script, the dialogues, or do you like to improvise? Uh, no, I, 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 I stick to the script because <clears throat> I just feel that the writer is the most important person in a film. He's not just a writer, he's an actor, he's a director, he's a set designer, and he's a music director. Because when he writes those lines, he imagines everything. everything, and it's the toughest job to do. So if he's written something, he's gone through this entire process, and he's gone through this process with his director, with everyone, and I feel it's, it's very disrespectful to say, hey, this is rubbish, and, you know, I, I'm going to say what I feel like saying. Um, uh, I just want to respect that. So never thought of direction? Oh, no, no, no. Why not? I don't know how to direct. I don't know how these people... Do I it. mean, to direct is to tell a story, right? And I'm sure you, you'll have some story to tell no, us. No, but to tell a story through, the, through a lens, it's, that's tough. How do you know where to, plus, where to put a trolley or a, or a crane, or what lens to use, and where to walk? How to tell the artist, you know, I want you to do this here and do this there. Mm. I'm unable to do that. Can you write a story, though? I've never tried. Never tried. Because I, it, it happens to me, you know, that I, I wake up one day or if I'm going to sleep, I get this really in, exciting, inspiring idea and I share it with a couple of people and they react very well to it. And then I just get lazy and I can't take it anywhere because I don't have the knack of writing. Because I think writing is a skill uh, which you're either born with or you're not. You can't really yeah. develop it. So that's why I wanted to ask you, did you ever write a story? Did you ever come close to writing a script? No, no, but, but, but you know, this is a great quality. Uh, and I'm glad that you shared this with me because um, if you do have these moments, you know, I would, even if you're in the middle of the night, just get up, put on the lights, speak it out. Now we have wonderful instruments. Just speak it out, record it. 
give it to somebody if you're not writing it. Give it to a friend of yours who is a writer. Mm. And say, these are my thoughts. Can you write something on it? And you never know, something very valuable may come, come out of it. I'm so, so you, may, you miss uh, uh, <clears throat> singing and dancing with uh, heroines in Uti and Kashmir and all of that? Or you're happy no, you're done with it's, that? It's, it's, it's a terrible labor. <laughs> and I hate it. And because I had to do it as my, as my profession, you know, I've just gone along with it. And there were, um, there were a couple of incidents uh, in the earlier part of my career when I was asked to do a song and I was replaced from that film because uh, I couldn't sing, I couldn't dance, I couldn't move. So th I think that has remained like a stigma for me. But I hate it when I have to do a song and I have to do movements. <laughs> and the kind of stuff that you guys do now is impossible. I mean, how can different parts of your body move in different directions? <laughs> well, in, in uh, yeah, and, Sara and still Zamana, be in rhythm as, and, and Sara Zamana, Hasino ka Divana also different muscles and nothing, parts nothing of moving. Nothing at all. You just had a, had a guitar and, and, and just some dark glasses so you don't <laughs> see anybody. And you're just strumming the guitar and just moving very simple steps. But, you know, to watch you doing all your steps, gosh, it's, it's impossible. I can never do that. So another uh, uh, query I had, or help I needed, is that uh, my personal life ha is being written a lot about. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, and mostly the negative yeah. side of it, you know, or they portray me as this cad or this, uh, you know, this, <clears throat> uh, this flirt or, or whatever. Uh, how do I get out of that? Because yeah. that's always going to happen because negative cells like man, mm. he's a good boy. He goes home at six in the evening. He has his dinner, the truth. sits with his parents and just relaxes. One sir. He's a cad. He finished his shooting. He went to see this girl, picked her up. He was drunk. He was doing this. That's headlines. Mm. You have to contend with them. So did you ever have to deal with negative media, like press? Yeah, I, I deal with it every day. Still? Yeah, even now. You, you didn't speak to the media for a long time. Yeah, because there was this uh, wrong impression that they had that when the emergency was declared, it was I that was responsible for the media ban. That wasn't true? No. They claimed that it was true because they said there were certain people that came and said it was because of me and therefore they banned me. So uh, the ban was like, if there's a film of yours that they're mentioning, then your name won't be there. Yeah. Uh, if you're lucky, they'll put a comma. Um, um, they would not, uh, we have several photographers here who are taking our photographs. When I went to a function, they would all put their camera on the floor as, as, a, as a, you know, a protest. A protest and uh, you, you were not written about, you were not done anything. But did that make you happy or did that annoy you? No, no. Uh, I, when, they, when, when they did that, I said, fine, I won't talk to them either. So we, we didn't speak for a, almost 15 years. And what's your relationship with the media right now? Uh, it's, it's wonderful. Yeah, I love them. Are this <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the, the dare I say anything else? <laughs> but the thing is, you know, we, we also live in times when... Uh, but I remember meeting you in London. You know, we were staying in the same hotel. Right. You were going out somewhere and and uh, I, I, I said, where are you going? And you had a book in your hand, says, sir, I'm going to sit in this park just outside here and just read. I said, are you mad here in London? You, why you want to do that? I just want to be in my own space because it's too complicated back there in Bombay. You know, <laughs> people don't, I, I can't function there. I mean, they just, they just hound you. And, what was that that was going through your mind at that time? I think I was going through a, a little bit of a personal shift in my life. Uh, okay. Uh, you know, with, uh, with an ex-girlfriend of mine. Okay. And uh, I was just taking some time off and, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the reason why I asked you about, you know, being lonely and loneliness is because uh, I really enjoy being with myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I have the most fun when I'm alone. I know that's not a good thing because you need people in life and Happiness is your only when it's shared and all of that. But These are just wonderful words. 
what you're doing is fine. It's fine, right? Yeah. Any memory of Raj Kapoor? Did you ever interact with him? Did oh, you yes. meet him? Oh, yes. Were you about to work with him? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, your family, much before you knew me and much before you were born, uh, were very close with my father. Right from the time of Prithvi Rajji right. and my mother. Um, and Prithvi Rajji was, uh, with his Prithvi theatres, used to travel all over the country. And every time he, uh, he came to Allahabad to perform, um, we would meet up and he would come over to the house. And um, he was fond of my father's poetry. So after every performance, the whole crew and the cast of the theater that he was performing in would sit in the green room and would listen, he would call over my father and would listen to his poetry almost throughout the night. That's the kind of association we had. Um, subsequently, of course, when, um, when I wanted to join films, uh, obviously there were many social events where uh, I came to meet Raji and, uh, and Shashiji and Shamiji. And always there was a reference and talk about the Raji and the, and the old times. So there was always an association. Right. But um, I, uh, I never got to work with him. I, I saw him working. But it was the greatest moment when he, when he was a part of a song in Naseeb. In Naseeb. And we did. We, we, we shot this song together and it was wonderful. Um, but we kept meeting, you know, and um, shooting in RK, he was always there. We used to be in awe of the cottage, cottage. and his white ambassador car that used to come in and the way he would get out and get into the cottage and we used to watch from a distance. And we used to imagine, what is inside that cottage? When will I get an opportunity to just go and have a peek inside this place? Or to go up to the, to the preview theater. Right. And that used to be one of the greatest things. Khwaja Ahmed Abbas, mm -hmm. with whom Raji did a lot of films. Uh, He's I also did, who launched you, right? Yeah, he, I did my first right. film with him. So when he uh, made Saat Hindustani with me, he had a few dubbings to do and for some reason he chose to do the dubbing at the RK, RK. Preview Theatre. I said, gosh, this is it, boy. This is the ultimate. So first time we actually entered that Preview Theatre so and you got an introduction and said, you know, that, that front couch, don't even touch it because Raji sits there when he sees all his films and, and this is the editing room where he does the editing. So these are all great moments for us. And then slowly, slowly, because, uh, you know, we were working in many films and Raji came to know about me, we started getting invited to the holy ceremonies and they were absolutely great joy. But uh, now we are together through marriage and we are relatives. I, uh, obviously, I never did a film with him and, of course, we used to meet. Um, and I remember that the first time I was able to enter the cottage was we had um, there was some celebration because a minister was coming to RK studios so we were all gathered in the lawn outside outside floor number one and then he came and we all met and Raji came and met him and then Raji said to this minister I think we'll go and sit separately and um, they were walking towards the cottage and he just turned and said uh, Amitabh you come so I was, you know, shocked. Invited me. So just three of us entering this cottage. I entered for the first time, and for the first time, I saw this room of his, where all his genius apparently came out from. There's just a, a very low masnad that is there, and nothing else. Yeah. And I was very surprised. All white, and a very low masnad, um, and he used to. Uh, just sit down on the floor and then he said to the minister um, uh, I would like you to meet Amitabh he is the tallest 
in our industry. <laughs> and I know what he meant, but I said, yes, sir, but only in height. <laughs> and um, these are some of the moments that, that you always remember. Uh, will you ever any, let anybody make a biopic on you? No. And will you ever... It would be the most boring biopic But what if, ever. like, are there some classified files that you open about your life? There are some what? There are some classified files about your life, about, you know, you as a person, about certain incidents. Would you ever let the world see them? See but there them? is nothing. Nothing? No. How is that possible? And if there are people that, you know, wish to write about it, they're most free to do so. But they can't, but right? I, unless I they... can't use that. I no, mean, but I unless they have write. your permission, they won't be able to make a film, a biopic on your life. No, no, no. I would never allow that. You wouldn't allow it? No, no. Would you ever write an autobiography? Never going to do that. Never? Would you see your blogs in a way, is a, in a way, is that? It's just, uh, it's just an occupational hazard for me now. Because if I don't write that blog, I get 1,000 people down my throat. Where the heck are you? Why haven't you come on? Have you gone to sleep? Have you forgotten? Have you forgotten to press the right button? All this thing keeps coming on SMS, on internet to me. And I have to respond to it. So even if it's two, three, four, whatever, I, I sit down and write it. But biographies, autobiographies are horrid. So you wouldn't allow anybody to make autobiography about you? There is nothing to make. I mean, there are people, they've written books and stuff and articles and um, all kinds of things. Right. But that's not me. Have you ever done a biopic? No. You've never enacted any no. real person's life? No. And my last question is, when will I get the opportunity to work with you? Because um, I, I, don't, I don't know yeah, There are some happening. waves and rumors going around that right. we may be working together. I hope we do, Ranbir, because I'm waiting to get a lesson in acting from you. <laughs> Thank you so much for this unforgettable experience. Thank you. I'll cherish yeah. this all my life. Thank you. Prithviraj was uh, with his Prithvi theatres used to travel all over the country and every time he, uh, he came to Allahabad to perform, uh, we would meet up and he would come over to the house and um, he was fond of my father's poetry. So after every performance, the whole crew and the cast of the theatre that he was performing would sit in the green room and would listen, he would call over my father and would listen to his poetry almost throughout the night. That's the kind of association we had.